respond to a comment. We'll do our very best. But if you even have questions during the replay, have no fear. We will respond to any questions or comments that you have. So pretend as though you're watching it live. So again, today on today's live show, we're going to be turning this wood piece into jewelry. I'm live on YouTube? Wonderful. Okay, so you guys, this is just a piece of poplar wood um, from a local hardware store. It's not no fancy, you know, I have like beautiful pieces of wood that guys turn wood. Oh, you should bring some of those wood pieces. I'll show some of my wood turners off. Um, so I've seen beautiful like coca bola and stuff. I have a bowl of coca bola, but this is just a basic kind of wood. And I didn't want to get a fancy wood because I wanted you guys to um, to know that you can just pick up extra scraps from maybe your husband cut up, um, extra scraps around, you know, or things from the local hardware store. Like guys that turn do fancy wood. Like look at this. This was done by Stuart Batty, if you guys know a famous wood turner. He's pretty famous, a good friend of mine. And he actually sharpened his uh, wood turning tool and then made this in my booth. This was done at a woodworking show here in Las Vegas a few years ago. And then this is also his other bowl, kind of warped, but he gets them pretty thin, that little sucker. So anyways, you don't have to get yeah, and you can polish and sand the inside of these, all of this. But today, we're doing jewelry with our wood. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, so I just want you guys, <laughs> now watch I drop it. <laughs> um, I just want you guys to know that, you know, don't get crazy. It doesn't have to be expensive wood. Anything you have, as long as it's not, you know, very fibrous or anything like that, you're going to be fine. <laughs> Hopefully. So I so hi everybody. Thank you all for joining me on today's show. If you missed the intro, uh, I'm Ani with Jewel Tool, and today we'll be working on wood, turning wood into jewelry. So fingers crossed, you guys. I'm gonna turn this into a pendant. I'm gonna try to do a cute little, maybe a triangle, upside down triangle, and cab it. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe the wood will speak to me, you guys. <laughs> so I hope you guys are having a fabulous day. Um, but this should be pretty fun. And you'll see the results come up pretty quick. Um, the jewel tool will sand um, and grind and shape the wood fairly quickly. So don't blink. You just might miss some of the action. So I'll explain each step that I do just so you guys make sure you don't miss anything. So who is here today? I'm going to be hearing a little Kristen in my ear, and she's going to tell me who is here today. Hello, Robin, Martina, and Claire. Welcome. Hi, Carol and Carolyn and Nancy. Welcome to the show today. And we've got Carrie and Karen. Welcome. Hello. Francesca, thank you for watching, girl. Wait till you see this wood. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Mary Ann. Welcome, welcome. Jo come join the party. Just put pour in the champagne, putting out the hors d'oeuvres. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Lynn. Welcome, welcome, you guys. Yes, you said Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Who, who, who do we have on with you? Uh, not with you. On I don't know, on YouTube. We've got Cindy. Hi, Cindy, on YouTube. Beautiful. Okay. So, you guys, I really haven't given it much thought. Really. I've had a very busy day, a lot going on. Um, and, and we've got Linda and Serena has joined us. Hello. Hi, Heidi. Everyone has joined us. Wonderful. So, today I'm going to turn this wood block into jewelry. So basically, I want to create like maybe a triangle, upside down triangle and cab it. That's my thought. I don't know. We'll see. So Yara is saying to use the grain pattern to my advantage. So any ideas on a shape would be much appreciated, guys. You know, my shows are quite interactive. <laughs> I really don't have much of a plan going in. You guys have seen this 
come true. This is uh, serious stuff when I say I really don't have a plan. And you guys kind of, I like think I'm going in this direction. You guys go, how about this, Ani? And I go, oh, okay, let's take that road. And then voila, we have this masterpiece. So you guys, I'm going to be using a lot of the purple ceramic. Hi, hi Glenda, you're excited? Oh, beautiful. So Glenda, Glenda, I think I got goosebumps. That's a little odd. Glenda said that she has wood. She's excited about the show. She's got wood from like 1940s. Is that the wood she's? 18, oh, excuse me, 1890s. And she wants to make some jewelry, like beautiful heirlooms to give as gifts to her family. So honestly, you guys, if you have, that's such a good idea too. If you guys have something that, you know, a piece of furniture from a loved one that you're keeping as sentimental, but the piece of furniture is not going with your, you know, designer motif look. You know, what if you were to take a chunk off of that and turn it into something wearable or give to family members? Talk about really appreciating that piece of, uh, of, of a, a sentimental value. Wow, that's a good one. Thank you, Glenda, for that, but it's true. You know, I've kept stuff and my kids are like, Mom, why do you keep that? I'm like, but that was your grandfather's. You know, what am I gonna do with it? And it just sits there or you put it in storage and no one will see. Just imagine. Anyways, so let's get going again. Oh, hey, Jared International. Okay, welcome. So we are gonna, so Diane says a long teardrop. Hmm. That's interesting. I might consider a long teardrop. I was thinking of like, so no one's digging like a uh, upside down triangle. Okay, so I'm thinking of doing like an upside down triangle, but then we can always turn that into a teardrop. So Yaro says we have more pieces. Look what Yaro cut for me. Like literally, and I tell you, when we went through just scraps of wood that we had, we really did. Look, this is just scraps of wood. I don't think I have pine in here. So, hi, Susan. Ah, thanks, Francesca. Francesca Watson, who is an amazing uh, metalsmith and jeweler. Um, guys, I've been telling you to join her open studio open jewelry studio. I don't know, Francesca, write it down. Um, and she teaches amazing uh, jewelry making. So the real deal right there, you guys. So she says she loves the purple ceramic. I do too. Hi, Bonnie. Okay, so I'm going to be using the purple ceramic, but I want to show you Oh, interesting. So Claire, you actually said you have some ebony, um, ebony, what are they? Ebony, ebony piano keys that she was gifted. Oh, you can polish those, my friend. A lot of the things I'm going to be using, you might be able to use those too, Claire. So back to what I was saying, I'm going to be using the purple, but I want to show you guys while I'm doing the purple stage, I want to show you how the, 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 the heavy duty grinding, the chocolate as we call, how these chocolate are going to grind as well. So I'll show you guys a quick little difference in grinding, but then I'll show you guys how to polish it. So I will start off with a drop. Yeah, no, I like the comments. Keep them coming. So I just want you to know. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't interrupt me. Because if I'm watching, yes, perfect. Nice, nice. Okay, so uh, so Francesca said, yes. Yeah, so Francesca says her uh, she's opening up her studio on Friday for new members. Yes, you need to get the chocolate. You need to get the chocolate, Francesca. So I am looking for a shape. I don't know. Someone says teardrop. I'm thinking of like a triangle. Kite. Okay, so let's go ahead and get start grinding. So you guys, what did I do with my abrasives? Okay, so I have the 80 grit here. You're going to do overhead? 
Okay, so let's do this. Now, I'm not really drawing anything. Maybe I should. You're, do you have a pencil? We don't even have a pencil around here. This is how well, fine, just give me a pen. This is how well prepared we are, guys. Like, don't mess. So I was thinking of either a triangle here, but someone says to do a teardrop. I'm kind of digging the teardrop. What do you guys think? Should I do a teardrop? Should I, if I do a teardrop, oh. okay. So let's go ahead. So if I do a teardrop, this is basically how it's gonna start to look. I kind of, it's kind of narrow this piece. Thanks, Yarrow, for my narrow piece. So. If we do a teardrop, oh, you can't see, guys. So if I do a teardrop, I'm kind of looking at that. Maybe. So, yeah, you, it's very hard to do a teardrop on other machines. So let's get grinding. Uh, okay, so you guys, if I'm going to use, hi, negotiator. So if I'm going to use like the, and hi, Shirley. So if I'm going to use the extra core 60, this is how quick it'll grind now. This is the one I've been using. This is a new one. Okay, Heidi says teardrop will show off the green. Okay, I love you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna start grinding. So I'm just gonna hold it. So you guys see how quick the 80, uh, the 60 grit grinds? That's pretty fast. But I don't wanna waste my 60 grit. I'm gonna use the 80 grit to show you guys the difference because I know the purple is also designed for wood. They use this a lot at the wood shows. So Watch the difference in the cut. You guys ready? So let's go ahead and cut it. And I have the vacuum on. So what's nice is because of the cool airflow, there's no burning of the wood. Do you guys see how much I took off immediately? And it's cool to the touch. So let's go ahead and do the same. Isn't this lovely, you guys? Way better than a belt sander. Who wants to do that? Look at this. And all the dust is flying away. So let's just kind of get some kind of a shape going. That was fast, huh, guys? Not going to lie. That was kind of fast. So let's go ahead and see how much we've ground down. So I just want to get the initial shape down. Yeah, but do the purple. I'm using the purple now. So this is the purple. We already did this so quick, you guys. Do you guys see that? Look at that. Okay, so now I will start rolling this around. So kind of get a rough shape, I would say. Yeah, so the purple's on the screen. If you want to know what I'm using, I'm using the 80 grit right now out of that to shape. Where am I? There am I. You guys see that? Let's kind of give it a little bit more of a roundness. Yeah, oh, it's on sale? Oh, so the purple's on sale. So if you guys need some more, it's a good time to stock up. So there you go. Don't you guys wish you can cab a stone this quick? Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so is that too long, you guys? What do you think? Should I shorten the height? Yeah, but I want it to be a little bit of a more of a rounder heart. Yarrow says, as I grind, it'll start taking shape. What do you guys think of that? It's OK. OK, so I think we're pretty good with this shape, you guys. OK, so what do you guys think? We're good? Let's keep going. OK, so we can touch it up. This is just a real rough. So now I'm going to turn this vacuum up. So now. We're going to do what we usually do when we cab a stone. So I'm going to grind this entire, like you can make this thinner for crying out loud. Look how, cool, uh, how thick that is. But I'll do that. You had a thinner piece? Oh, it's too thin, that one. Nah, I want I want a chunky, I want a chunky one. So I'm going to go ahead and bevel the edges and bring this down. So let's go ahead and put bevels on. This is going to be fun, you guys. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Look at how fast it takes it down. You guys see that? 
So look at how quick we took that down. You see? Oh my God. Don't you wish you can cab a stone this quick? So I'm honestly doing the same method, you guys, that I do when we cab a stone. So the 80 grit, the purple 80 grit, yeah. So I went ahead and did this, you guys. You guys see how I put a little bevel. Now it's flat at the top, but I want to keep, I want to keep, I want to create a really nice cab. So I'm going to create another bevel. And dude, I really wish we could cut uh, stones this fast. Look at it. It's like coming like butter. The only reason, you guys, I'm not darkening it with a Sharpie, because it'll penetrate and, you know, absorb through the wood. So your best bet is like a marker, I mean a little pen, because those are, or a pencil. A pencil is actually perfect. So there, and you can see... But that's all I'm going to do. You guys see that? Look how beautiful that is. So yeah, Yarrow's got the purple on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and create another bevel around here. You guys see that? So we got this little tip at the... Wow, look at the detail work, you guys. Oh, yeah, I got a pencil. Thanks, Yarrow. So now, you guys... Obviously, my cab is going to look pretty cute. I'm not going to lie. I could see it happening. But it's a little on the thicky side. So I might grind it flat really quick. Now, again, if you want to do this like super, super fast and do it in one shot, you can use the four inch wheel, the larger wheel. Oh, maybe Yaro says, what if I do a teardrop on both sides? Should I do a tear? Here, let me ask. Let me ask people, should I do a teardrop all the way around? Like completely without a flat back? Talk to me, guys. I'm asking a question. Question, should I do a teardrop? Should I make the whole thing cab? What do you guys think? Okay, while you guys decide, I'm going to start rolling this over. So look. Now we got a pencil, yay. So let me know, you guys. I'm not going to mess with the back. So you guys look. Thanks for the pencil, Yarrow. Okay. Okay, you guys want to do all the way around. Those are my people. Okay, yes, everyone says yes. Okay. Oh, hi, Debbie. Thank you guys for all your input. Okay, so go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Thank round all sides. You got it, guys. It's unanimous. So let's go ahead and grind it. I've never done this, so wish me luck. I hope you guys are all saying a prayer for me. Look at that. So now let's give it a nice little zippity doo da. Isn't that lovely? Oh my God. Just watching it, even watching this, you guys, happen is so like gratifying. I don't know how to explain to you. It's like watching the transition is so. Um, like lovely I don't know how else to say it so I kind of want to create more of a dome who who hi Kirsty from the UK thank you for joining us and thank you for joining us all you people who are watching this on the replay because I know a lot of you guys are watching on replay I hear it from you so just know that I am also here listening to you on the replays okay so wow I already started cabbing that I gotta stop that so let me give it a deeper cab hold on give me a second guys I just want a deeper cab I went a little excited on that Bonnie has an idea okay listen Bonnie one side faceted let me see what we can do so far. I don't know if I'm going to do the faceted just yet, but we can do facets on another wood piece. What I post those be uh, like, okay, so you guys, it's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and bring it to some kind of shape now. I'm going to clean it all up, you guys. So the 80 grit is going to be fast, you guys. I just want you to know, especially depending on what wood you have. So I'll do the detail work, but I want to grind like the face and kind of get my 
cab going. So let's go ahead and get that nice and round. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create the cab, you guys. Just You can touch this all up later. We're still going to hit it with a 220 grit. And look at that. Oh, la, 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 la. Oh, my God. Okay, so we went ahead and smoothed that. Let's go ahead. So if you have a point, remember, always keep it pointed towards the whole of the vacuum because the disc is rotating counterclockwise. Oh, my goodness. I know, right? Bonnie said if only she could cab her agates this fast. I was just saying that. Could you imagine cabbing so qu quickly like this? So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of bring it together. Yeah, that's true. I'm not going to bezel it, so we're not going to leave it flat. No. So, you guys, uh, that's a good question. Robin asked, do most woods work this quickly? Yes. So, you are working with Cubitron 2 by 3M, you guys. And that is one of their, like, premier lines of woodworking. So yes, it works on metalworking, but it's excellent for wood. So like for example, yes, yeah, so this is poplar. I think I'm good, you guys. I think I'm gonna stop with the 80 grit or just let me smooth this. Yes, yeah, so Yarrow has it on the screen. Everyone knows that you're doing, I'm using the purple, right? Okay, good. So that's kind of cool. Just kind of clean up. So we're gonna clean it up probably on the 220 grit stage, but I just wanted to make sure I'm good, kind of get rid of that little seam. I don't know. Do I want a seam in the middle, you guys? I don't know. I don't know if I want a seam in the middle. So, so look, you guys, I have another piece of wood here. I don't know what it is. Hi, Pat and Caroline. So this is another piece of wood. And this is how fast it's taking it down, you guys. So it really doesn't matter what wood. Here's another uh, type of wood, too. Yara, what's this white one? This is pine. And I'll take it down like butter. Look, you guys see that? So to answer Robin's question, like, you know, is it only because it's poplar wood? So what do you guys think? Do you guys like this? It's kind of cute, huh, my little torpedo? So I'll decide. What, you don't like it, Yara? No seam. I love you guys. No seam. There it is. That's all you have to say. There's no seam and there it goes. Bye seam. Isn't that lovely? I didn't have to hand sand this. Poor everybody. Good. I was, I watched some YouTube videos yesterday. Oh, you guys, I feel so sorry for those people on YouTube that are doing this by hand and all they have is a belt sander and all they have is sandpaper on a piece of um, like on something hard and they just keep going back and forth like this. Like, uh, Yeah, pine is super soft. I mean, honestly, the look, but look, the, the 80 grit is unfazed. So that's another thing. So remember you guys, I always talk to you guys about cheap abrasives and how they load. So do you see how this was designed to cut wood? And do you see how 3M's technology has created this so it doesn't load? So that's good. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Kat said, as long as it's not petrified wood. So I'm going to use my 220 grit to kind of, yeah, but the diamond, yeah. Petrified wood is with diamond. So you guys, I'm just going to show you guys how I'm going to sand everywhere. So basically, we're doing what we did, you guys, with the stove. The, the, the grind marks are so deep, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and sand those smoother with a 220 purple ceramic. A little smaller for earrings. Should I make this smaller, you guys? Oh, Debbie's just saying, it was, yes, the earrings would, if you make these smaller, it would be adorable for earrings. So look, so you guys, I'm just gonna go over everywhere I did. So now, if you missed a spot, you can totally fix it on you know, this stage. 
You know, so don't worry about how perfect to necessarily you got it. Wow, you can really see the colors start to come out. So I'm just, I'm just basically smoothing right now. Smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. Keep that. In some. Yes, I'll drill a hole at the top. Thanks, Leslie. Yeah, we'll do some. We'll make a pendant. I even bought a, I even have some pinch bales here. So we're going to turn this puppy. I was even thinking about putting like a wire through it, but I don't know at this point if we're going to be able to do that. Yeah, you can show that. Yeah, you can show a side view, Yara. That's good. So just since I've already created the shape. So that's a good question. Heidi said, do we have to clean up the purple after using it on wood? Remember, the wood is the wood. The purple is not going to clog. But let's say that you have a really soft kind of wood and it kind of got a, it's got, it's like, it's like mixed with resin or something. All you do is, again, just take some water and rinse it off. That's all. I, if not, it's not that detrimental. Honestly, if you grind some metal, it'll probably go away. For real. Because I sand wood at shows and I really don't have time to sit and wash any abrasive. So I just keep going. I'll like grind metal right after that. So there, I hope I got everywhere. I'm here chit-chatting with y'all, not even paying attention. So let me get rid of that seam. So see, you can get rid of the seam here. Just, if you wanna get rid of that seam, just give it a little roll, super quick. No seam, isn't that so lovely? Ooh, it's feeling good. So here we are. So just get it nice and, so I'm gonna use, the scratch eraser after this. It'll accelerate everything and then you're welcome, Heidi. I think I'm good. I just want to make sure I have no more. So your secret is just to make sure you have no lumps and bumps. And by doing that, you guys see how I'm rolling it just over just really quick because it's so soft. You know, it's a little easy to create some kind of, you know, s chunks and bumps and stuff, but we don't want that. Oh, it's looking so good, you guys. What do you guys think so far? What do you think? Let me roll this over just a little bit. I feel like the tip needs to be a little bit more narrower here. Hold on. See, you can do minor adjustments at this stage. And I'm really barely touching it, you guys. You got to remember that. You don't have to push really hard. And I think we're pretty good. It oh, I love you. Leslie says, I'm a star, and you guys are all my groupies. Oh. I'm going to roll this over, you guys, just a little because it's getting a little sharpy sharp. <laughs> I mean, I love the sharp, don't get me wrong, but it's a little too sharp. Thank you guys. Okay, good, thank you for the love. I've been hearing it. Kristen repeats all your comments to me. And just to give it one more thing for good measure, I'm gonna roll it over. Okay, so now just make sure you got that all nice and even. I think I'm good, I think I got it, okay. so. Look what we did. Look what we did. How pretty is that green? Isn't that nice? Wow, right? How quick is that? W don't you guys wish you can do it? And I get this fast. Oh, man. Okay, so let's see. So the 220 looks just the same as it did when I put it on. Yep, that looks identical. So now, you guys, I'm going to grab my medium. I know this sounds so unconventional. Like, what are you doing with the scratch eraser on on wood? Well, you guys. Scratch erasers also work on wood and plastics and acrylics. Did you know that? Fun fact. I'm going to be using the medium right now for this piece of wood. I was using the two. So right now, just to give you guys what I did, 
I use the 80 grit. Where am I? It's not stamped very cleanly. Where am I? 80 grit. So 80 grit. No, that's not 80 grit. Is that 80 grit? Okay, it's 80 grit. 80 grit in the 220. There you go. 80 is a little. Oh, 80 is a little bit on the darker side. If you guys want to know, look. Do you see that? So then now I'm going to use the medium. Now. Every grade of, this is where you might have to play with your scotch bright because depending on how hard the wood is will determine whether you want to stay medium, if you want to jump to the fine, you know, or use the very fine. So I always say, you guys, running this at full speed, just give yourself a little, I want to say like skin test. <laughs> I always say that. So here's a good way to test it. Look. So if you're just going to roll it, so the secret about this is, you guys, just like the metal, oh, you guys, it has a pretty smell to it, too. You kind of want to leave it on there because what it's going to do is going to start to fill in all those little nooks and crannies in the crevices. You guys know what I mean? So I'm not pushing hard. I'm kind of like letting it glide over and get rid of any kind of scratches that I created earlier. So here's a quick little... If you guys want to see a quick little test, already you guys see the color coming out. Woo! Let's talk about instant gratification, you guys. So, like, if I wanted to see how the medium is performing, I'd stop real quick. So, this is to, to do a little skin test if you wa are deciding to use the medium or if you're going to use the fine or the very fine. So, grab your felt wheel, the clean one that you would use for, like, um your stone just make sure there's no color on it if that's the case remember what i tell you guys to sand it off it's my sand here so like you can sand it off if you want to clean it up yeah so if it has a color on it this is how you clean your felt so yeah so if your felt is not as white that's how you clean it up and then give yourself another good amount of compound you guys see that so here's that spot you guys so this is like a little taste test of what kind of how that's going to come out. Just to give you guys a little preview. Yeah, so this is the felt. This is what I'm using. Yara put it on the screen. To give you guys, whoa, la la, woo! That looks like, like tiger's eye or something. Doesn't that? Wow, oh, this is going to look good. I'm so excited. Okay, let me contain myself. Let me go back. So party's over, guys. We gotta go back. So party, Yara says party's just started. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna use the medium because I do like the finish. So let's keep going. So now, so your objective here is to get rid of all the lumps and the bumps. Look, so there's like a little bit of some lumps and bumps, but your primary goal is to get rid of any kind of like deep scratches. So work it section by section. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Kat. I'm hearing all your comments. I'm hearing amazing. Wow. I know, right? You guys, no joke. So what this is going to do is it's good. So you can change the angle, you guys, because you want it to like fill in the fibers. So just like it fills like on metal, like the porosity or the holes or the scratches, this is going to blend the metal the same. I mean, the, this is going to blend the wood the same as it blends the metal. Yes, so that's a good question. So this is what's going to happen to your, your felt wheel. She asked me, can I use this again on the stone? Absolutely. Just give it another, another sand and then continue use it. No. Oh, after metal. No, no, no. If you use, let me show you. So if you have one for metal, you keep this only allocated for metal. You do not use it for this. All this metal will then go onto the wood. No, no cleaning will take a lot of this off. You're going to have to sand quite a bit. It's, wor it's just worth buying a whole new one. They're not super expensive. I suggest buying a new one. Don't clean your existing one. Just buy one. We have a sale going on now. Really, you guys, it's not worth you, uh, the frustration that you're going to get. Because even the smallest color, 
even the smallest metal will transfer onto the wood. It really does. So I'm going to glide over this. Yes, yeah, so I'm burnishing and sanding at the same time, you guys. Like it doesn't get easier. Th so basically what this one wheel is doing is it's filling in all the nasty pits, all the fibers, all of that, and it's eliminating multiple sanding steps that I'd have to go through. Now, yes. Thank you guys for the love. I hear all your comments. Kristen has repeated them. I appreciate it. I hear all of them. Thank you. Thank you for the nice comments. I love it too, you guys. Okay, so I think I'm done. So I'll, like if I'm working in this direction, you know, I try to go against, you know, change up the grain. And did you guys notice that nothing burned? So the problem with grinding at super high feeds, you have the problem of grind uh, of uh, burning the wood. And because of our patented airflow technology, none of the wood will burn. Yes, yeah, so she could use, so I was asked, can you use the stone and enamel on the same felt wheel? Stance, yes. So you can definitely use stone, wood, and enamel on the same wheel, absolutely. Just remember, if you're working on like cloisonne enamel and you get metal on it, just remember to clean it, just like I showed you with some sandpaper. Oh my God, are you guys seeing that? Fudge sickles, I haven't even done this side. So just keep it even. Do you guys see how I'm kind of gliding it? You want to get that evenness. Oh my God, can you imagine doing this by hand? I'd give up. I swear, I don't know how these people do it by hand. I mean, I know they have like belt sanders, but there's only so much you can accomplish with a belt sander, dear Lord. So I think I'm good. I got to do this bottom side. Hold on, let me just give it a nice little, I'm going to dance. You guys should see my body while I'm doing this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm rocking along along with it. Yarrow, you should do a side view. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is so much fun, you guys. Woo! -hoo. You know, when something is fun, it doesn't feel like work. I feel like, oh yeah, this is so good. Kind of give it a little uh, roll back and forth, kind of get it nice and even. You don't want any kind of flat spots and I think I'm good you guys I'm just kind of overkilling because I really want that polish to come out good so you can't over burnish let me tell you if anything you'll just get a prettier finish I want to make sure that all those fibers are super smooth oh I didn't even do this backside oh my god what am I doing oh yeah oh yeah this is so much fun it's okay, I can dance. I'm dancing, you guys. This is, woo, look at that, whoa. Woo, oh yeah. It's so fun. It really is, Yarrow. You should try it sometimes. Maybe this would be a good stress reliever for you, Yarrow. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm good, you guys. So now, a lot of people who work on the wood, because a lot of people make jewelry, I have a lot of customers, you guys, right just you know some people even like this finish like to them some people who don't want the higher polish this is like would constitute like a mat if you will if you're into the matte look this would be a finished my friends matte look because what it's done is it seals the wood beautifully so you want to make sure you guys you have no more lumps and bumps because the polishing will definitely reveal all of those so let me just make sure I got, oh, it's getting slippery. <laughs> the more polished it is, you guys, the more slippery it is. The jewel tool is what? I can't hear that. Okay. I heard it, uh, she was trying, oh God, you guys, it's getting slippery. Now I'm getting scared. Okay, 
So I'm turning this off. Party's over. Woo! Oh my god, you guys. <gasps> like, shut the front door, as Francesca says. I see that too, but she just said that recently. But honestly, you guys, it feels so good. Like, look at the sides. And I love how you... This was a good idea, whoever said no seam. Because it's like so fluid. You follow the grain of the wood. Oh my god, and it's so smooth. Now, so here there's there's a different road you can take i just want to put it out there you guys so there's the road where you can either use the fine micro finishing film in a 15 micron and a 9 micron do you guys see these two these are super super fine sanding now you guys saw how it polished with the um, scotch bright. I mean, with the with the felt after this stage, okay. But if you want really, really fine, fine finishes, you might, you know, super high polish. You might want to touch it with the very fine. And I'm just going to show you. Just run it at slow speed. You don't need to go fast. And just give yourself a light little sand. You'll see a little bit of a sheen come up. And honestly, you can actually, uh, I so the people who work with, I'm, I'm not dancing. So if you look, there is some little fine, fine little things. So that's why some people definitely go to this. This is if you really want to get it like super high polish. I mean, my polish before was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. But some of that you can sand down super fine. I just want to put it out there. I'm not going to do all of it, but just let you know that we have the abrasives that can do this. You know, 3M doesn't play, you guys. Like, they really don't play. They got an answer for everything. And so since we're partnered with 3M and we use the machine to our advantage and don't do things rub-a-dub-dubbing with our hands, we let this beautiful disc do all the work for us. You know what I mean? So I have the fine on here with a medium um, medium foam is what I have. Actually, I should use the foam. The foam gives a nice little dome. You see, that's what the foam does. The foam really uh, conforms to... Oh, ho, 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 ho. thought I was polished before. This is just nuts. So you guys see how it's a fine little sand? You guys see how it's sanding? Just super fine. Now this is if you want to get fancy. If not, you can go straight to a polish from here. So Carol asked, what is this wheel? So just like I was saying, these are the micro finishing films. And I've got it on with the, uh, what do I have? I have the, I have a medium soft cushion so just to give you an idea i'm going to actually pull it off and i'll show you or yarrow can put it on the screen okay so honestly deborah deborah asked what stage would you stain the wood now i like the natural color of the wood to be quite honest with you so I'm not a much of a stainer, but I know a lot of people, especially all those woodworkers out there, they love to stain their wood. So I would have stained it probably at the first grind when I was grinding at the 80 grit. After I have my initial shape, I would definitely, while the grain is fresh and exposed and rough, it'll totally absorb it. And then I'm not grinding as much as um, anymore. So definitely, yeah. So even if something is varnished, the jewel tool will polish the varnish with the felt wheel, to be quite honest with you. So I'm going to stop because <laughs> we're crying out loud. That's enough. I was doing the uh, micro finishing film. She wants to know what I'm using. So I'm running this at slow speed, you guys. It's marked at slow speed, see? So I'm using the fine, the 15 micron of the micro finishing films, but I've got it on, oh, jeez, you guys. 
Yeah, you can do it. Uh huh. Just so that they have an idea. So you're just gonna post the one that's mounted. Is it mounted with the soft cushion? Yeah, that's the one. Exactly, that's the one. So the one on the screen is what I'm using. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was going to put it. Oh, this is so good, you guys. You know what this reminds me? Like, you know if you have something that you enjoy touching because it's super smooth? Like, you know, like a, what do you call Like a, a, a thinking rock? You just want to rub it? This is like my thinking rock. Doesn't it look like a piece of rock, too? Like, this is nuts. Even this is pretty, you guys. Even leaving it like this because it's ultra finished. So it doesn't look unfinished at all. But we're you know what we're going to do? We're going to polish it. So if you guys wanted to use... Oh, do I have a... Oops, Kristen, I don't have a, a fine... A ver do I have one? Okay, this is one. It's not even on. It's not even on right, but oh well. I didn't even stick this on. Lovely. So you guys, if this snaps off, Forgive me, I didn't even stick it on properly. I don't even know if it's on right. So I'm just going to glide over the 9 micron real quick just to show you guys how it works. Yeah, so th just real quick. Honestly, I don't even really need to do this. But I'm just going to glide over it. I know, Kristen, can you give me a real one? Huh? I just need this one. Because this one actually, I want to use this one, but it has like metal on it. You guys see, and you don't want to convert that. So if you give me another, um, here, this is a good way to show you guys how to remove it, by the way. I'll show you guys. Another 9 micron, please. Yeah, because I'm going to use it with, so this is a good way to show how to. No, I have it. I I have it perfect. So I'm going to actually put, so this one, if you guys see, it had like metal stuff on it. And when I was using it, it started to transfer onto, you guys see, it started to come on here. Beautiful, Kristen. Thank you. Beautiful. So do you guys see that? So this is how you put it on here. There's a little lesson learned. I'm telling you guys, I don't plan these things. I just keep it going. Life, this is exciting, you guys. Hold on, let me let go of that so I can use my hands. Dear Lord, work with me, people. Huh, okay, good. Don't laugh. Yara's laughing at me. See, 3M. Hold on, I'm going to put that wood piece down. Okay, so this is how you do it. I like to kind of lift it up on both ends. And this, I call it the hook right here. So I kind of blend, I kind of... So you guys see how I totally got it there. Oh, sh uh, so she know, uh, Debbie says she knows a fancy jewelry designer who makes jewelry with fancy woods. It's true. You guys, it's such a good way to make money because you know what I'm talking about. What is not the ex most expensive thing in the world? <laughs> oh, so it, the Yaro's telling me that the kit on the screen is already mounted. So if you buy that kit, you won't have to mount it like me because some alpha here at Jewel Tool will mount it for you. Yes. Okay, I'm with you. Okay, so Debbie was correct. Debbie said if it was other fancy wood, she wouldn't stain. But if it is pine, it's true. If it is pine, I would stain it too because it's quite boring, to be honest with you. It, you know, I agree. So Debbie comes from, um, her father was a carpenter, so she knows a thing or two about the wood. But it's true. And do you guys see? It's such a fine sand. It's like almost like a polish, you guys. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Lisa, for joining. Sharon, Sharon joined us, sorry. So you guys, this is like almost a polish. I just want to show you guys what you can do like for an ultimate, ultimate fine finish. Now you don't need to go to these two steps, you really don't, but it's a matter of preference, you guys. I'm not pushing hard, just letting the abrasive do all the work. And do you see how earlier with the, um, what do you call it, with the 15 micron, the orange one, this one, it was creating more of this white um, powder. You see that? So the more sand. Whereas the 9 micron is so much more finer. 
And so it's just kind of preparing me for a polish. So honestly, you guys don't need to do these two steps, but you know me. I'm going to show you every step to get the ultimate finish and it's your job if it's your choice whether you want to skip these two steps you guys and go straight to from here to a felt it's your call you can do whatever you want no rules yeah so even if you if you have a polymer clay kit you can definitely use these and work on what so i think i'm done i don't even know where i am anymore So who has the black walnut? Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Lisa says she has beautiful black walnut will come up beautifully. Now, you guys, honestly, just for like a wow factor, I could have gone and bought some fancy wood that was going to shine up really pretty, but I want it to be a real life scenario. Literally, Yarrow grabbed these from our garage, cut them up this morning, true story, out of scraps. Okay, so it's environmentally friendly, and basically your cost of goods is zero. So talk about a nice profit, guys. So I just, I want it to be real. You know, I keep it real here. You guys know that. There's no pre-planning this show. What are you talking about? I don't plan anything. We just go by the seat of our pants. You guys want to see something? I show you guys immediately, don't I? So I'm just rolling it. Now it's turning into a big circle. Look at this. Oh, my, but you guys, you don't understand. Look at this. Like, remember what we, what did, where's that one that we started with? Remember, we started with something like that. Look at this, you guys. Look at this from this. So anyway, so now we're going to polish, guys. So you guys like it? We like it? We like it? So I'm going to use the felt wheel. So just take a look at everything we did. Super smooth, no bumps, no lumps. Do you see how the light is following? And look how the light's going to follow here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The reflection is everything. The reflection shows a shape, and the reflection shows <laughs> mistakes. So you guys, make sure it's smooth. So I'm going to use the felt wheel. Now, again, if your felt wheel is... Um, it does look like marble, darn it, Heidi, you're right. So if your felt, you guys, I'm going to say it again. If your felt is messed up or dirty, take some sandpaper and sand it down a little. But that's all. Mine is clean now, so I'm good. And give yourself a good amount of compound all the way to the even edge, okay? So now we're going to start to pull. Oh, my God, you guys, it's so slippery. It's flying out of my hand. Thank you guys for the beautiful comments. I hear them. So already with just a little bit of pressure, I'm not gliding over you guys. I'm kind of, I kind of want to kind of press and keep that wood pressed. Do you guys see that? Oh my God. Looks like tiger's eye. I swear this reminds me of tiger's eye for some reason. So give yourself another amount of compound. Compound is your friend during this period. So. Oh, so you can sand the felt with 80, 120, 220 sandpaper. Is the question I got was, which sandpaper did I use to sand the felt? I think this is 80, but I go from 80 to, you know, whatever I have. That's just scrap stuff that we have from 3M. That's also purple, Cubitron. <laughs> My rep had given me a whole box of those. Right? I'm wild to you guys. Right? The polish makes it really nice. Like, so nice. And you know what's neat, you guys? Like, if you're feeling this, here, let me show it. Let me. So, if you're feeling this, you guys, oh my God. Look at that. Woo! Wow. So, wow. So if you guys are feeling this, you know what's interesting is your, your fingernails can tell the difference, I swear, if, there's actually, if you're touching wood or if you're touching like lacquer. So it's a good, it's a nice feeling, you guys, to polish the wood. 
instead of just coating it with lacquer. Because you can see the, like, right, you guys? I'm so loving this. The darker wood, I'm not going to lie, looks really sweet in the polish. So I'm just kind of holding it in sections, kind of like how I told you how to section and polish. Like, remember when I polished like this? Remember back in the day when I polished that? So I'm doing the same in section polishing it. Here we go. Where am I? Where am I? Oh, I yeah, so now I'm using the felt. You guys, it's on the screen. If you guys need to pick up a separate one to kill. Oh, look at that color. Wowza, gazowza. So I'm not going to rush my polish, you know, because I want to make sure you're polishing each fiber, you guys. You know what I mean? You want to make sure all those fibers are pressed in. I swear, you guys, this looks like a stone. Thank you guys for the love and the beautiful comments. I appreciate it. Doesn't it look like a stone, you guys? So now look at me. Now that I've gone and pressed it, now I'm kind of bringing it all together. So I worked every little section slowly, you know, and so now once you do that, then you can kind of do one big pass across. You guys see me do that a lot. I'll do section by section and then I'll do one big, you know, pass. You guys see that? Oh my God. Oh my God. You can show the side view of how I'm rolling it? Sure you can. Hold on, let me just start. Can, let me go to the other side. So this is this side. You're gonna do side cam? Oh, okay, so, okay, so no, no. Wait, what are we doing? We're so confused here. Oh. Yeah, so you actually do a side view, Yaro. Do a side view, because I want to show you guys how I'm doing this. Thank you, Heidi. It does look amazing, huh? So ready? So I'm holding it here, and I'm using this hand as I roll. So this is being the support. But do you see? It's like gorgeousness. It does look like jade. looks like everything. I don't even know anymore. Hi, Leslie. Leslie says it looks like jade. Thank you, Leslie. So we did this. So let me do this side. So this is the side we didn't polish, but it's still pretty. But look at this. Ooh la la. Woo! Okay, let me keep going. Stop that, Ani. Stop that excitement. And I got some black, which isn't good, but what can I do? Oh, here. I'll use a new one. So what side? Okay, so this is polished. So let me do this side. So again, do yourself section by section work it then move kind of work it work it back and forth kind of against the grain it does look like petrified wood you guys who wants to suffer and polish petrified wood when you can do this and uh, have the beautiful satisfaction super fast and it's light much easier honestly you guys we're see the reason why you get such a beautiful polish on the petrified wood you guys is because it's so hard but with our, the new technology with the abrasives that are in existence you can get that same look by you know s keeping those fibers all pressed down and not making them look like fuzzy but if you notice a lot of people who make jewelry don't go to a polish because of two things, you guys. I'll tell you. If they, they, if they, they can't go to a polish with natural wood, you guys. So their only option is, is take it to a fine sand. And then they have to use lacquer. And no one wants to wear lacquered jewelry like you would you know, like furniture. So the reason why a lot of people leave their wood jewelry mats is because the only way for them to get a really beautiful polish is to lacquer it. And like I said, no one wants lacquered wood. It kind of loses the value. Yes, 
I love that it doesn't need a coating. That's what I'm saying. The coating diminishes the value and the workmanship of the wood. And it wears off. It's true. This is like, well, yes, this is physical material being shaped, being burnished. Those fibers are now embedded even. And so you're not going to be, you're not going to have, let me give myself a nice little roll. Yeah, definitely a long lasting shine. And because also the lacquer, it gets scratched up very quickly and it just doesn't look right you just know when something is lacquered you guys you really know when something is lacquered so i don't recommend lacquering jewelry so there we go you guys so this is the side i just worked on let me flip it around smooth that baby here so this is what we just did So you guys see, I mean, I could show you guys how to grind the wood, but if you can't take it to this, that's no fun. Look at this, you guys. Wow, I am like in shock, you guys. Like, okay, I have issues. Oh wait, maybe I should have done the tip, hold on. Yes, so Marcy is correct. It, this, yeah, this, this is good, you guys. I'm not gonna, like, it does look like a stone, Wendy. Wendy says it looks like a stone. <laughs> Negotiator goes, we don't need that stinking lacquer. Honestly, lacquer is stinking. It stinks, it scratches quickly, it just cheapens, it just cheapens the look. Now, oh, Yara says to put it on. Hold on. Yeah. Pretend you're wearing it. Hold on. Let me get my hand. Oh, how pretty is that? I can't do it, Yaro. There. This is so pretty. They can imagine it. There. Imagine it on me. Um, so to address the concern about are the fibers exposed, all of that. So with so th we didn't just sand sanding is old age old fashioned what we did is that same scratch eraser that we fill holes out of metal we fill porosity with is the same product i use to fill the fibers of the wood and make them smooth and even so it's almost like it fills it like a filler L it burnishes uh, in one token so it's not gonna grab any kind of oils and fill, or you're not gonna see those fibers like come up in the, the grains of the wood. You're not gonna see that because this sealed the deal, baby. And so after it sealed it, I just gave it a fine, 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 almost a polished finish with the micro finishing film in the very fine and the fine. And I ran them at slow speed. So the slow speed will mimic hand sanding without the hand pain. Because, <laughs> you know, we don't do hand sanding around here. <laughs> that's, for how, that's how the other half live. We don't do that, right? Right, guys? We don't do hand sanding. We've got a machine that'll do it for us while we see what's happening. I'm telling you guys, it was so gratifying watching this process. It was fun. I'm telling you, I was like dancing, dancing in the sun, moonlight. Is that how the song goes? Sunlight, moonlight? I don't know. Okay, so that's how excited I am. Oh, this is good. So I don't think, I could be wrong, but I honestly don't think it's going to dull out from the oils of your skin. I don't know. Some people have some violent skin that are talking, <laughs> violent oils that will kind of contaminate metal. What do you think, Yaro? Oh, Bonnie asks, Bonnie, Yaro thinks Bonnie's question is, will it absorb an oil that you apply on it? Honestly, if you feel this, I wish I had feel a vision, you guys. It doesn't feel like there's room, there's no pores even open to take your oil. I feel like the oil will ball up. 
Does that make sense? It's so like waxed. Polished is like a, it's like a wax on, wax off polish. Yes, true. So Debbie, Debbie, I love you. Debbie, Debbie comes from a father who was a carpenter. Debbie said no other machine could sand and polish this wood. It's true, true story. And the amount of time is so fast because every woodworker, she says, will have to put a seal on it. And it's true, but you guys know what those sealers look like. I did the woodworking shows. You guys, I lived and breathed. I think I have wood dust in me, you know, and... I know I don't like the way that lacquer looks. The lacquer, yes, it dries, but after a while, it can scratch up, and then it looks nasty, and then you have to sand the lacquer down and polish it, but again, it's a glaze over. It's like putting, like if I was to take uh, clear nail polish and put it all over this. That's messed up. The light won't reflect it as perfectly, but this is natural. So I can put a hole through this. I can drill a hole, and we'll put a little pinch bale. I have a drill. I'll just use my jeweler's burr. Jeweler's burr. Jeweler's burr. No problem. Yes, so the Tom said I can put a little beeswax on it and it'll naturally seal it. However, Tom, I would recommend, yes, beeswax would be the only thing I would re recommend. However, Tom, you don't know. You don't know how sealed this is right now. It's not even going to absorb the beeswax. I would say maybe after, you know, years of wearing it, you'll be able to put some beeswax. But right now, no, yeah, it's too thick. Go back on the overhead cam. There's no room. There's like, look, go back on the overhead cam. Look. So yeah, you can hold the pearl vise in it, but I'm actually going to, so let me just show you guys just real quick. It's so sealed, I don't know how to explain it to you guys, that the beeswax, maybe it'll fill in one or two, I don't know, but you guys, it's so smooth. I feel like there's already a wax on it. Does that make sense? Like, th I feel like there's already a wax on it. Wax on, wax off, wax on, oh so pretty so I'm gonna drill a hole right through that and I'm gonna put this little pinch bale on it what do you guys think what do you guys think so let's see how much I have to drill yeah I actually I need a tiny drill you know what Yaro I think I'll use my drill like the high-speed steel drill that'll go through wood right okay so you guys I'm gonna drill this so give me a second let me get set up for a drill yeah just give me front cam let's Put this somewhere special, soft, gentle. You sit right there. Let me get a drill bit. Do I have drill bits here? Hold on. Stop, Yarrow. Gosh, Yarrow says I have a messy bench. Yes, I do. Because guess what? After this is over, I actually work. Yes, I work. I work and I don't have time to do this, nor do we have the manpower right now to have someone do this for me. So it is what it is, guys. So I'm going to take one of my drill bits here, you guys see, and I'm going to drill a hole. I think it'll be enough. So let's just hope and pray. And I'll just glide right over here. La, 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 la. Okay, so you guys, um, let me go ahead and bring this. Oh, here's a tip. Here's a tip, you guys. Heidi actually gave me this tip. Thank you, Heidi. So instead of, so yesterday you know that we put this on here and we were polishing plastic with it. Do you guys remember yesterday's show? I put a buff on here. That's so it goes up to a quarter. So let's say I have to drop it the hole all the way down to a half a millimeter. So instead of using the key, I'm going to hold. Yeah, there's nothing for the wax to cling to. So I'm going to actually turn my jewel tool on slow. I love you, Kat. Kat said a messy bench is a real bench. So look, you guys, I'm going to turn the, the flex shaft on, and I'm going to hold it here, and watch how I'm kind of giving it resistance with the, my finger at the top, my index finger. Do you guys see how it's making it, the jaws closing, you guys? Okay, I'm going to 
Well, I'm going to just turn it off wrong way. So I brought it down pretty good to fit my drill bit. Sorry, let me use my other hand. So right there, get it in there. Now I'll use the final little to tighten. I love you guys for my messy bench. Thank you so much. Honestly, I tell you guys all the time. My dad used to tell me, a jeweler that has a clean bench, don't ever go to him because he doesn't know what he's doing or he's not working. But it's true, you guys. Whenever we would start the day when I'm working, I would clean it up and tidy it up real quick just to get my thoughts in order. It wasn't perfect, but I would tidy up. I knew where my plies were. But by the end of the day, it would look like this. All hell broke loose. You know, when you're really working and you're in a creative zone, you don't think about, oh, let me make sure this is perfect. Let me make sure my thing is put back in the exact spot. No, you're in a creative process. You're in the zone, you know? So a jeweler, a good jeweler is always in the zone, gets into that zone and creates masterpieces. So that's what I have to say. So let me see where I should drill the hole. I had opened one up. Oh, Heidi said put the bit in first. Duh. Yes, I could have put the bit in first and would have closed it all the way. But it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. It is a neat little trick. So I'm hoping I'll get the hole straight. Let's see. I think I'm good. Maybe I should mark it. That'll be smart. So let's go ahead and mark it. Yeah, so, okay. So I'm going to mark it right about here. You guys see it? God bless it. The pencil doesn't even want to write on it. It's so shiny. You guys see that? I could barely get a pencil. So I want to make sure it's straight all the way. I want to, that's just for reference. You don't have to mark it on both sides, but that's the way my brain operates. Okay, so you guys, let me turn this bad boy on. Oh, 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 good question. You guys ask, when am I going to expect the drill bits? I have news for you, you guys. The drill bits will be up on our website. Yaro, can I get them up today? Because they are arriving, I think, tomorrow. Oh, yeah, and I've tested them out. They are delicious and high quality and everything I wanted for you guys. So hopefully, Yaro can get them up on the website and if you guys have orders like i know you guys have ordered if you guys want to add it well i'll add it with you know no problem because you know kristen always does that for you guys she's always helping you sorry kristen so i'm gonna drill a hole so wish me luck you guys i should have drilled a little hole beforehand but i want to make sure my hole is straight Yeah. Let's hope for the best, you guys. Yay. Clean that up all the way around. Give it a little. Oh, you holding it? Okay, how much longer am I going to hold it, Yaro? Okay, just give yourself a nice little. Just want to make sure that hole's big enough. <laughs> we did it. Looks good. Let me just make sure that back side's got a nice opening. Just make sure. Because that pinch bale's got to go through. It's nice and straight, I think. Yeah, we're good. I just want to make sure that other end is clean. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So that's the hole. That's the hole. So now I'm going to take that pinch bale that just keeps disappearing. However, it's a little crooked. So just be mindful of your, not the length. Hold on, let me. No, the pins are always crooked. Like, you just see how crooked this pin is. So everything's crooked about this. Hold on, let me fix it. I'm a perfectionist. Actually, I don't even like that pinch bale. Never mind. So. Open it properly like this. Just kind of pop your thing open a little bit more. 
Okay, let's see how straight these little pins are. This is pretty good. This one's a little crooked. I'm not gonna so you gotta fix it just like so, kinda move it a little. That's not doesn't want to move. Great, hold on. I'm gonna use some elbow grease and move it. There you go. There I moved it. You move when I say you move. I'm just joking, you guys. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna push it up more. Great, now I bent the pin. Okay, there. I think I'm good. I just want to make sure. Am I gonna clear this? I'm moving a lot, Yarrow says. Okay, I've cleared it. Okay, we're good. Actually, let me move this pin a little lower. So you guys, I'm just gonna move it because I want it to fit really nice. So we've got that pin that's gonna fit beautifully. Cause I want, when I pinch it, I want it to hug. Where's the hole? I want it to hug. Do you guys see that right here? I want it to hug. And so this one is a little, where are you? Oh, you're a little off. Hold on, give me a second. Let me move this pin a little bit here. So you think these pinch bales are easy? Let me tell ya. Oh, Yara says the pins are long. They're probably gonna touch each other. If that's the case, I'll grind the little mother down. Oh yeah, they are gonna touch each other. Yara's right, darn it. Yara's always right, you guys. The story of my life, Yarrow is right. So guess what, you guys, what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to just snip it. Who said this? Debbie, you're leaving. Bye, Debbie. Thank you for very much. Do you guys know where my flush cutter is? All right, well, I have a... The black one is so cheap. Where's my Lindstrom? Oh, here's my Lindstrom. There you go. What are you saying, Laura? You're saying yeah, I'm doing good? The best I've ever done. Thank you, Laura. Let's see if this will work. That's good. However, I still don't like this bale. But you know what, you guys? Yaro says, who cares? I'm actually going to change the bale. I'm going to turn this into an Ani bale. I'm going to change up the shape, probably polish it. There. There. Okay, this is this is basically it. Let's just not get too crazy with perfection. Oh, put it on my... Ooh, la, la. Here, let me show it for uh, overhead. Yeah. You guys see that? There you go. Go, we've got a gorgeous little sexy pendant. Woohoo! You guys see that? How pretty is this? <laughs> yeah, you can polish this. However, it's a little crooked. I gotta fix that. I'll fix that, no big deal. The whole thing's all crooked. I might even change the pinch bail. We're not worried about the pinch bail. That could easily be changed, but do you guys see this? <gasps> That's my own oils. Look. This is white, but it's just so, when you touch it, you guys, it feels like there's a wax, to be honest with you. That's what it feels like, because you can f still feel the natural wood. <gasps> Marcy, no kidding, right? Talk about the earrings on this bad boy. Look at this, hold on. Hold on. I have the, yeah, let me do this one. I might change the bail. Oh, my hand's covering it. God bless it, Yarrow. Hold on. Is it earring? Let me make a second one. <gasps> How pretty is this? They can hear me. Okay, so there, Yarrow. Thank you, guys. Oh, how pretty. You know me, I'd wear these. Yarrow, you can't see the dark. I got dark hair. You're focusing. <gasps> so pretty. I like it as a pendant. I still am kind of growing on this bale. I might keep the bale. I like this bale. It kind of adds a little teardrop as I'm looking at it. It reminds me. Oh, Carol wants to know if I want if I change the bale. Um, 
If I find another one, I'll change the bale. Hold on. All you do is just open it up again. Give me a second, Carol. Let me see if I have another bale. I don't know if I do. If I find it in the next three seconds, one, two, three. So far, I'm not finding it. Why do you do that, Yara? I feel like Francesca when she leaves the camera to go wash something. She's like, talk amongst yourselves, she says. I don't know where that other bag of, um, I don't know where it is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have another pinch bale. I thought I did. Oh, well. Okay, so look, 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 look. She wants to see it. I don't care about this. It's not like I'm putting this up for sale. You want to see how to remove that pinch bale? Watch this. So you guys see how it's like at the tip like this? So gently open up your, your plier. Just open it up a little. Kind of, and then kind of like if you don't try to like kind of just pop it open like that. And there you go. There, it's off. Just a little leverage, exactly. And so you want to push it back towards each other. Just kind of bend it back, pop it back in, change your mind, do whatever you want. Hold on, I closed it. It's Ani. Oh, Joe, she wanted, oh, she wanted to know if I could grind it down and change the shape. Oh, well, hell, maybe we could. Oh, I'm just pinching it, just pinching it. So I can grind it down, but, you know, that's another video. So, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. It was lots of fun with the wood. With the wood. Um, uh, you know, but there's so many things you could do with wood. So now that we polished it, I was even thinking about doing this, you guys. So just mic up the camera. Okay. Just so you know, you guys, I was thinking about putting designs in. So we, we might not be done with this, you guys. So I was thinking about, that's why this is here. I was thinking about taking my cutting disc and putting like some grooves in it. And then in the lay, that's why I have some wire here, take some wire, so make channels through it and put like beautiful, not wire wrapping, but inlay of the wire in the wood. Do you guys know what I mean? Kind of following the pattern. Do you guys see that? No. Thank you. So, like, you can do this, like, and create, like, shapes with it. Like, so I thought about doing something like this. Do you see what I'm talking about, you guys? So if you do, if you did something like this, let's say, you would inlay the wire into the wood so it would look like a finished piece. You wouldn't like it wouldn't look wire wrapped. It's kind of like putting like a, a high end luxe finish on wire wrap. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty like the kids say pretty dope. <laughs> pretty cool. So Kristen's laughing at me. Kristen, stop or sick. <laughs> so you guys, there's so many things that I still want to do with this. Really, you guys, um, I could totally do this. Um, like it's unstoppable, but the wood is a wonderful medium to change up things, you know, and it's inexpensive. It kind of differentiates you from the rest because honestly, you guys, how many people make wood jewelry and l it looks this good? Not that too many people make wood jewelry only because it's it's hard to polish it. Yes. So so right here, okay, so you guys are interested. They're interested. So I, w I wasn't going to wrap this with wire. What I was going to do is, you guys, I was going to take my cutter... No, uh, if anything, I'll do another segment and plan this. So I was going to cut, you guys, can you zoom in, Yara, on this? So I was going to cut a channel, okay? And then I was going to put the wire in the channel so it, sti it sat flush, even. And then I would have probably polished it all even, and someone would go, what in the world? How did you do that? And you'd be like, 
that's my secret, not telling you. So we might actually keep that as a uh, project. Maybe we'll even continue that till tomorrow. So you guys, um, let me know if you guys are interested in seeing how I inlay the wire, because that's a really quick hack to do the wire. And if you don't want to use white gold um, or silver, you can even take like um, more of a yellow color to it. I kind of like the white, the copper, and kind of give it a gold look. This would should be polished. I'd polish it. So you can, yeah. We thank you, Yarrow, Captain Obvious. Polished copper will look rose gold. Ah, thank you very much for today's show. So if you guys are interested in me putting the inlay, and you guys don't forget too, since wood is so easy to work with, you can even like create like a little seat a little burr and then inlay like turquoise and grind and polish the turquoise on it i know a lot of woodworkers that do a lot of inlay they buy my stone kit woodworkers buy my stone kit so that they can grind and put their stones in it so it the, the possibilities of working with wood are endless just just imagine if you inlaid a turquoise or another you know another teardrop stone smack in the middle of this you guys want inlay? I know I like it. So, so inlay, I'm with you guys. Okay, so you guys, I will do inlay. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow um, and show you guys all the different possibilities. So, you guys, while you're drinking your coffee and sipping something today, think about what I can inlay. So, I'm going to do the wire and then I'm going to look for some stones to pop in. And so, maybe I'll have another piece. Maybe I'll grind and do another one real quick so we can have two for tomorrow so just to save time because you guys already know what it looks like polished right so i hope you guys liked today i did my very best and i'm so glad you guys came to the party um and i had lots of fun it's really gratifying you guys if someone has like uh, irritated you or you just want to escape from the madness of the world this is an inexpensive way to go into a happy zone i'm honestly telling you i was dancing there was no music being played but i was dancing i was happy it was happening fast i was watching the gradual grind Ooh, everything was working in like the universe was all coming together and then smack back to reality stop the show on it get to work do this send the email to this person did you call this person when is this arriving la, la, la. So this is my escape with you guys. You guys thank me for doing these shows, you guys. Honestly, I thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm glad you like my ideas. I'm hearing all your comments. So stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll be listening to all your messages to me. I'll be listening to everything you guys have to say because you know I listen and I uh, appreciate every single one of you guys. Oh, today, big shout out to Karen Miller Anderson. She polished a finger. I love her. I just like love her. Hold on, I gotta find her. <coughs> I'll explain what I mean. So Karen Miller Anderson had this um, old, where is she? Karen, where are you, Karen? Karen, okay. So Karen posted this. I reposted it. So Karen posted this. So what they are is fingers, a hand, and the finger had broken out of, what was this, Karen? She re so while I was given this glass, it says glass, glass hand with a broken finger and used my jewel tool to reshape the finger. A little hand surgery this morning. The shape of the hand and the closed fingers made it challenging. I used all my diamond discs, including the brown polishing diamond. Photo shows before and after. I figured that this is the before because it looks a little stubby. And I feel like all of these are, the bottom is the after. Wow, seamless job, Karen. Did you guys know Karen had a PhD? She got a PhD at age 50. Talk about inspiring. So anyways, you guys, thought I'd show you guys the finger. It's a nice finger, not that finger. What are you guys thinking? Not that finger, it's a nice little glass finger. So you guys, just wanted to show her off. I show you guys all off. Just keep them coming. I'll just keep doing it. Anyways, you guys, I'll see you guys here tomorrow where we'll probably continue with inlay. Inlay tomorrow. Yay!
<coughs> there's so much inlay. You can't stop. We can inlay stones. <coughs> Heidi actually gave me an idea. So Heidi sent me this bead also with a hole in it, which I was going to cab yesterday and grind the other side. But then she told me we can do an inlay because, you know, that inlay of the bezel and all that is like all the rage right now. But I have a better twist on it. I'm not too keen on that bezel sitting up so high. It kind of looks like a top hat, like so, like it looks so random. So I have another way to create a seat and bring it down. I'm going to show you guys some of my techniques. You guys can take them and run with it. I have, that's all, that's what I'm here for. So anyways, you guys, I'll see you guys here tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Love you. Bye, you guys.